Good morning, everyone. So, you guys, today um, I have a prophetic video, right? Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to um, share this with you guys. So, I have received this passage from the Lord yesterday afternoon, right after I have went out and um, uh, was on my ministering. Um, days just yeah just have uh, ministering sessions with a uh, few people and um, so time to time that's what I do so I didn't have enough time to actually um, do this video yesterday as per usual sometimes father just you know changing your schedule ups you know here and there he never worked the same way um, often for too long because um, I feel like he doesn't want me to be comfortable in um, you know scheduling things fixing things in one place that's just not how um, he works so so you go after I came back home yesterday uh, after my day of ministering, right, I have um, starting to have a look at um, some work on my laptop, and I heard my Holy Spirit speaks, and He given me um, Matthew right sixteen. Now I wanted to also explain that I have done this uh, video in the past as well, but I feel like um, He must have want me to. Um, do exactly the same is by simplifies simplifying and um, uh, actually sharing these passage application which is um, something that we'll be covering today right the topic of scripture and its meaning and its application to our life like how we to apply um, each passage right so there is a meaning and then there is um, application to of each passage of how we can actually apply these passage right to our life. So, in th right now we're gonna have a look, have a look at Matthew sixteen right verse twenty four to twenty eight. Then Jesus told his disciple, "If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take." his cross and follow me for whoever would save his life will lost it but whoever loses his life uh, for my sake will find it so for what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world um, and forfeits his souls or what shall a man give in return um, for his soul uh, for the Son of Man is going to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. Truly, I say to you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Right? So in this passage, I have covered the scripture meaning. So today we'll be doing the application, right, of the passage. How is it going to relate into our life? How can we apply into our life? So you guys, we are living in a world, right, and surrounded by world preferred narratives based on how our culture interprets um, what we see, uh, what we think is normal, social normal normality right what we think matter what we believe is right or wrong um, these have been based right and engraved in us most of us through social belief sometimes um, uh, how you were raised you know um, your ancestors um, opinions and beliefs so this is how um, not most of us view life, okay? And most of us gain belief as an individual through this lens, right? 
so I often right this thing are determined and being judged right uh, by our own cultural interpretation and experience it is um, in this context that we try to make the most of our lives so um, like limit box with limited space, right? Our uh, minds are a bit like that. You know, you have an empty box and we keep filling ourselves in as we grow by um, our family opinion. We see the culture we live we, you know, we, we see what the culture and the nation and people around us think is right and wrong or wrong and then we fill this thing up in our empty box so however this space is limitless right it's a limit space our own ideas has okay limiting lens in how far we can see things how far we can receive how far we can put um, grass um, things into this what we call our life box right so um, unless of course if to grasp something new right unless someone who is new right um, coming along that is when um, they can really put something new into our box our life's box so you know um, we often see and believe um, what we believe in our mind is through this limiting lens right of our life so um, unless someone come along with something new to help us out our list of this thing in our life's box right may not actually uh, reflect reality Right, and often it is not because, just like just like I said, yes, we 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 um we see things, we know things, but often it's a limit. We don't know everything, right? The world is a big place, and knowledge is many. You know, it's so. So really look at it like this, our meaning of an individual entire life, right, often, um, often when you also come to a place where you come to the scripture, right, and um, how the application of word when we read these scriptures and interpreting and actualizing the word of God meaning um, as often as how the writer see it or intended it so in our world right an astonishing number of people including Christians speak freely of a different truth for each person right this is talking about the scripture meaning and application so say my truth and your truth right can look very different what true to me and what true to you can look very different so this view our objective truth does not seem to um, exist and we sink into a swamp of incoherent relativism right and this is a big word so what does it mean so on this path we easily okay if, if we were to believe in what we think the scripture is saying there can be hundreds of um, truth out there <laughs> put it that way it can be really confusing so so supposedly on the path we easily slip into this era of suppose that we individually and personally supply the meaning of the scripture we fall into this trap when we ask when we are asked to read a verse of passage and then instantly tell what it means to um, to us this 
This approach, of course, bypasses that the actual meaning as being really important and presume without our coming out and saying it what that what I just feel right what I just feel about the scripture what does it mean about the scripture it has to be what it means at least what it means right to me and if truth can be different for me than it is for you then what does it mean right is is it even valid when it's um, like that. So what is actually lost in all of this of course is uh, the essence and the actual meaning of the scripture. So when we take the what it means to me approach we sail right into me, myself and I, right, water. We get confused meaning with application the meaning of scripture is what it means to the person who wrote it. And to those who first heard or read it, it is only logical and reasonable, right? That in order to rightly put scripture into action in our lives, right? Applications mean, and its meaning must first be determined. Yes, the Holy Spirit speak to us through the word of God. However, the spirit usually speaks first through the meaning right of the word and then through application of that meaning into our lives that that is to say the spirit lead us into all truth not just into how we feel about various passages and verses right okay whether or not our understanding is correct or valid you know regarding to the scripture right once we have a sense of understanding of what a segment of scripture actually mean then we can move on to the application that is we can decide whether or or not or how that or what the actual meaning can be applied um, in and through our own lives and circumstances if we confuse meaning and application which usually means we skip meaning and go straight to what it means to you. So we are, we are, we will fall into all sort of error and confusion, right? And this is how the false doctrine often um, birth, right? Unbiblical belief system, contradictory positions, misdirected churches, and um, Christian cults are built upon such era okay one of the things Jesus came to do was to help us live beyond limitation of our preferred narratives um, about almost everything including our religion our uh, relationships how we use our time energy and money um, and of course how to make the most of our lives how to live how to give, right, love, and um, so much more on what the Lord will bring to our lives and can bring to our life. He taught us what he knows to be true about um, life beyond what we can see, right? Only the Lord can show us that. The things of heaven um, and exquisite knowledge only the Son of God can give because he knows the fathers, right? We heard the story of Peter's great proclamation here that Jesus is the Messiah, but likewise found him um, actually rebuking the Lord in this um, passage of uh, Matthew 16, right? Um, that was really quite funny. Uh, so, um, so only a moment later when Jesus said things that didn't fit into his plan, that is when um, the Lord had um, told the disciples that he was going to go to Jerusalem to actually um, die. So could this be the way to make the most of our lives? Surely not. So a premature death seemed like a waste of one's life, right? And I guess this is what probably Peter had thought. And um, however, it, he didn't not understand the um, what Jesus was actually um, appointed to do 
right? Um, so here you see that he, um, the misunderstanding on the disciple heart here um, because he was a man, right? He's not, he's not God. He did not understand um, that Jesus Christ's death was going to bring um, many uh, salvation for many nations, the chosen people and the Gentiles alike. Um, so um, Jesus said, for whoever would save his life will lost it, but whoever lost his life for my sake will find it, here in Matthew 16:25. This verse, okay, is centered on the word safe. By calling the twelve to die with him, he was calling them to uh, voluntary, voluntarily, right, give their lives away for his cause and the benefit of others. So they were, this would have sounded, um, it didn't make sense to the disciple, probably at that time, right? So Jesus continued to explain why giving their lives away was the key to making the most of their life. Um, he said if you lost it, you'll find it. The word find means to discover something significant, value or value. This is how Jesus used his word when he said the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in the field, in a field which a man found and, and covered up. In Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and um, by that few Matthew 13 44 this man in Jesus parable found a treasure that was so valuable that he sold everything else he owned to buy this few Jesus told the 12 if they would follow him to their death they would find a treasure right so valuable that it would make them um, you know it would make the most of their lives seems true. He said, for what will it profit a man if he gain the whole world and forfeit his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? Matthew 16, 26. Now he was talking their language, profit. <laughs> That's what they wanted to hear about. What were they going to get as his follower? But Jesus didn't use the word profit like they would have expected. Um, he said it's possible to gain the whole world to become uh, fabulously successful in this life and still forfeit your soul. It's the same word translate in life in verse 24 here. There, there's no reason to change the translation here. Jesus wasn't talking about uh, the mind, world and emotions. He was talking about their time on earth. Jesus means it possible to live in a way that looks like you are wrecking up a huge profit only to find at a future time beyond what you can see that you have sustained a significant loss. In other words, Jesus was saying don't fall for the preferred cultural narrative that is limited to what you can see. There is a time beyond what you can know when the loss will be gained and gain will be lost. When was this going to happen? You might ask. So here in verse 27, Jesus answered, For the Son of Man is going to come with his angel in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay each person according to what he has done. This passage has an awesome feel to flavor, and it makes a statement of all statement. It says, I am coming. You can count on it. That's what the Lord is saying. And when I come, it will be the final word on everything. Game over, right? It doesn't matter if you believe it or not, He is coming. It doesn't matter if you die first, He is coming. It doesn't matter how bad things get, He is coming. I am coming, He said, count on it. Jesus coming at a future time to repay each according to what they have done. So this is a promise. This is the reference to the judgment of seat of Christ in the coming day. Where those who have believed in Jesus for eternal life right, will be evaluated as to how they live this life. 
Jesus said, then it would be decided.